unlike a certain predecessor that we just did a video on, Mario Party 2 is super awesome! It was my first Mario Party, so I have so many memories associated with this game. It's like a nostalgia burrito. It's just all these childhood memories and good feelings all wrapped up into this little game, this little package. And obviously there are other games too, but this one primarily. So many good things to say about it. So, I'm very excited to rank all the boards, but they won't be my rankings. These will be your rankings, your votes from the questionnaire we did last year. So, 157 of you voted, and we're going to get into the results. So, let's start with the board that got the least amount of votes. In sixth and last place is Bowserland with a total of 13 votes. Unlike a certain Bowser board in the original Mario Party, this one is actually good and fun. You would think that would have been a criteria back then, but, but that's not to say this board doesn't have its own fair share of evil nonsense. For example, the blooper circle, land on the happening space in front of it, and you are now stuck in that blooper circle until you land on another happening space, which isn't that hard, it's more than a 50% chance, but it can still be very annoying if luck does not shine on you. After five turns, the Bowser Parade at the top of the board starts moving and anyone caught in the parade's path will lose two coins per space as it makes its way to the start of the board. There's also four warp pipes that let you move across the board. There's an item shop in the top right corner that forces you to pay coins for a random item. And the board has two boo passing events, so there's going to be a lot of stealing going on. Now, after hearing all that, you're probably thinking, this board actually sucks, it's not fun, everything is against you. But the difference between this board and, say, Mario Party 1's Bowser board is that there are variables that you can change in your favor. So the Bowser Parade, you can actually change the path as you pass an intersection. If you're low on coins, you can go to the item shop and get that random item that they force you to buy, even if you don't meet the requirement. Oh, and the bank gives you five coins. They don't take five coins, they give you five coins. The catch is that if you land on the bank space, you owe all the money that was loaned out from all the other players and yourself. It's a concept I really like and I kind of wish it returned at some point. In fifth place is Mystery Land with a total of 15 votes. Mystery Land is basically a better version of Wario's Battle Canyon from Mario Party 1. It's like the developers looked at Wario's board and said, how can we make this more fun and less horrible? I mean, this board is still far from perfect. It's still very random and you can get stuck on islands, looping them constantly and not going where you actually want to go. And yes, moving from island to island by landing on a specific happening space can get tiresome, but this board does a lot to give you a little bit more choice. For example, the skeleton keys that let you move to the center of the board where you can at least pick the upper left or the bottom right. Island movement is in a set order, and you can even pay the bomb on 10 coins to transfer you from one side to the other. And it's not mandatory. You will not pass the bomb on and be forced to leave. You can stay. It's a nice board, but definitely belongs in this area of the list. In fourth place is Pirate Land with a total of 19 votes. And I'm almost there, just a few more spaces to get across the bridge and... Happening space right back to the start. It's that blasted pirate ship and those way too numerous bombs that really make this board suffer. Every happening space on the bridge sends you right back to the start, including the bridge above you, along with anyone else that may be on the bridge with you. I mean, there's an entire half of the board that often goes lightly explored. The nice thing is that there is an item shop near the start where you can get a golden mushroom to zip past the bridge, a skeleton key to access Boo, or, or just a magic lamp to get you to the star on the other side of the board. At the end of the day, I do have to give this board credit for forcing you to think outside of the box to get past that cursed bridge. Not a bad board, but it can be frustrating. In third place, we have Western Land with a total of 30 votes. I thought Western Land was going to be the top pick. It's usually the one people remember the most. 
And that's probably because Western Land is a simple and solid board. There's nothing too crazy, it has a great path layout, and lots of junctions and different options. The railroad on the outside is easy to understand and poses a little bit of a threat, especially for those who are a little too eager to visit one of the two Boo passing events. Lots of places to stay clear of the railroad's path, along with a nice desert theme and memorable music, it's one of the better boards in Mario Party 2. In second place, we have Spaceland with a total of 35 votes. Ba 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 I love the Spaceland theme, and it's so fitting because this entire board is this really awesome space station with piranha plants hanging out in air capsules and planets visible in the distance. The time detonator at the center of the board counts down each time a player passes it, unleashing a giant laser when it reaches zero that vaporizes all the coins of the unfortunate souls caught in its path. It's a neat but devastating idea that is reused plenty of times in future Mario Party games, and here it forces you to spend the coins regularly to avoid any future catastrophes. I really love the theme of this board, so I'm so happy to see it so high up on this list. And finally, in first place, we have Horror Land with a total of 45 votes. All of these Mario Party 2 boards are great, and many of them could have taken first place, but I think Horror Land is absolutely worthy of this title. Every two turns, the board changes from day to night, and vice versa, changing up the paths and activating certain passing events. There are so many things to do during your turn, and a lot to plan ahead for, making this one of the more strategic boards Mario Party 2 has to offer. So many opportunities to steal with Boo, too! There's also that double bank path. Oof, that hurts! The visual changes and differences from night and day are so cool! The mansion is destroyed during the day, but at night it's rebuilt and glowing. The road becomes filled with eerie ghosts during the night. And the Big Boo statue, that only appears during the day. A truly classic board. Yeah, this is one of those times where I'm happy that I didn't make this list, you guys did. These were your votes, your results, and I did not have to put up with this incredible burden to pick my favorite Mario Party 2 board. I mean, they're all just really good. They're some of the best in the series, and I've 